John and Laura are a happy couple with a son, Robert. When Laura gives birth to a baby girl, Sophia, Robert insists that Sophia is not his sister. Troubled by their son's persistent claims, they decide to have a DNA test done to prove to Robert that Sophia is indeed his sister. The results come as a shock. The home of John and Laura erupted into a delightful uproar with the birth of their beautiful daughter, Sophia. This bundle of joy with her rosebud mouth and blue curious eyes sent ripples of happiness through their hearts, infusing their lives with an invigorating wave of bliss. It was an era of sleepless nights and tired smiles, a little coos, soft giggles, and the magical firsts. From Sophia's first hold of their fingers to their maiden attempts at turning over, the essence of life seemed to take on a new hue, freshly painted by Sophia's delightful presence. However, in the midst of this joy, a shadow of concern hung over John and Laura's hearts. Their son Robert, the firstborn, who was once the bright light of their life, stood as an island of denial in the sea of the familial happiness. With his furrowed brows and stubborn stance, he adamantly refused to acknowledge Sophia as his sister. He looked at the world through the lens of a typical six-year-old, a world where he used to be the cherished prince, now dethroned by the arrival of a sister. Robert's rejection of Sophia was a chink in their armor of joy. Laura's maternal instincts, bolstered by the recent birth, discerned this change as more than just childish jealousy. Both she and John believed Robert's behavior was an ill-conceived plea for attention, a reaction to the sudden shift of focus from him to his newborn sister. A profound sadness tinged their smiles every time they caught Robert, glaring at Sophia with undisguised resentment his small chest heaving with silent protests. Nevertheless, John and Laura were steadfast in their mission to transform Robert's stubborn defiance into brotherly love. They understood the delicacy of the situation and decided to face it head-on with patience, love, and understanding. They endeavored to include Robert in Sophia's care, to involve him in diaper changes, bath times, and lullaby sessions. It was their hope that these shared responsibilities would help him feel important, valued, and an essential part of Sophia's life. They also ensured Robert's life continued as usual, sustaining his routine and recreational activities, such as soccer practice and piano lessons. They didn't want him to feel replaced, but rather loved equally, his place in their hearts irreplaceable and precious. Despite their efforts, Robert's resentment didn't thaw overnight. Yet John and Laura were not disheartened. They believed in the bond of sibling love and knew that time would pave the path for acceptance. The arrival of Sophia had slightly dimmed their joy, but they trusted the love and understanding in their home would eventually help Robert acknowledge Sophia as his sister and that their familial bliss would be restored. Their journey wasn't easy, but it was part of the beautiful complexity that comes with a growing family. They knew each day was a step closer to Robert's acceptance of Sophia, and each moment a stitch in the fabric of their unique enduring family tapestry. Life in John and Laura's household was akin to a seesaw, tripped by the emotions of their son Robert. The arrival of Sophia, the new cherub of the family, had planted a seed of denial in Robert's young heart. Despite his parents' unyielding efforts, the six-year-old remained resolute in his conviction. Sophia was not his sister. Every attempt to show Robert that his sister was a blessing, not a threat, seemed to fall on deaf ears. From engaging him in Sophia's care to maintaining his routine, nothing could swerve Robert from his path of stubborn defiance. He was a ship caught in the storm of a singular belief, refusing to navigate towards the lighthouse of acceptance. John and Laura, overwhelmed by their son's steadfast refusal, knew that they needed professional help. Thus, they turned to Warren Robertson, a seasoned child psychologist. With his keen insights and soothing demeanor, he was their beacon of hope in the turbulent sea of their despair. Robertson, a man of gentle voice and deep-set eyes, was well acquainted with the complexities of young minds. He examined Robert with a watchful gaze, picking up on the nuances in his words, tone, and gestures. The boy was adamant, his expression mirroring his conviction. Sophia was not his kin. His stubbornness intrigued Robertson, but it also set off alarm bells in his mind. There was much more to this than meets the eye. 
To navigate through the mist of Robert's stubborn denial, Robertson proposed a surprising solution. A DNA test. It was an unconventional move, he admitted, but the situation demanded an equally unorthodox response. He believed that the incontrovertible proof of a DNA test might be the lighthouse to guide Robert out of his self-constructed maze of denial. John and Laura were taken aback. A DNA test seemed like a drastic measure, but they were drowning in their desperation to restore harmony to their family. In the face of their son's unwavering denial, this offered a glimmer of hope. They hoped that the irrefutable science of genetics could help Robert accept Sophia as his sister. The air in their home, once warm with love and laughter, had grown cold and tense. The DNA test was their wild card, an unexpected maneuver in the chess game they were playing with fate. As they waited for the results, their hearts trembled in anticipation. The stakes were high. This wasn't just about proving Robert's kinship with Sophia. It was about mending a frayed bond, about restoring their son's faith and family. The proposal of the DNA test was a unique turning point in their familial saga. It was an arrow of hope shot into the sky, a desperate cry for acceptance from Robert. As days turned into weeks, John, Laura, and Robertson waited with bated breath. They hoped that science would succeed where words and love had seemingly failed and finally convince Robert that Sophia was indeed his sister. Their home was a ticking clock, marking the seconds to a defining moment that would either strengthen the bond of their family or strain it further. Despite the uncertainty, they held on to their hopes, knowing that sometimes it takes the extraordinary to change the ordinary. The stately tranquility of the home that John and Laura built shattered the day the DNA test results arrived. The whiff of cold, sterile science that the document brought felt out of place in their warm, nurturing sanctuary. Holding on to each other and their last shreds of optimism, they unraveled the truth it bore. The discovery sent a seismic shock through their family. The words etched on the paper, the genetic code that linked bloodlines, revealed an unthinkable truth. Sophia, their bundle of joy, their second child, was not biologically theirs. Disbelief hung in the air, thick and suffocating, as they parsed through the cold facts and figures. Each line of the report felt like an ice-cold wave, crashing against their perfect family facade, tearing away at the sturdy foundations of their shared life. Robert's denial, initially dismissed as irrational jealousy, now carried a prophetic quality. How had their son sensed this reality? The myriad of unanswered questions trembled around their minds, creating an echo chamber of confusion and hurt. The revelation thrust John and Laura into a whirlpool of emotions. There was shock, a raw, staggering force that left them gasping for breath. There was the searing pain of betrayal, gnawing away at the edges of their hearts. And there was a profound sense of loss, a hollow emptiness where their perfect family image once stood. And yet, amidst the tumult, their love for Sophia remained unscathed. She was the child they had held, nurtured, and loved. Her laughter had filled their home. Her smile had warmed their hearts. She was their daughter, regardless of the genetic blueprints that the world deemed necessary for familial bonds. But what would become of their family now? Could they still offer Sophia the cocoon of love and safety they had once promised? Could they reassure Robert, who had unwittingly stumbled onto the earth, that they were still a family? Sophia's innocent coos and giggles echoed in the silence that had blanketed their home. They were a reminder of what was at stake, the happiness of an innocent child and the unity of their family. They realized that the strength of their bonds would be tested like never before. With the revelation of the DNA test, their home became a different kind of battlefield. They weren't fighting to keep the illusion of a perfect family alive. Instead, they were fighting to redefine what family meant for them. John and Laura found themselves standing on the precipice, their past assumptions disrupted, their future uncertain. But despite the storm of shock and confusion that surrounded them, their resolve was clear. They would weather this storm together as a family. In the face of adversity, they knew that they had to cling on to each other even more tightly. Their family life had been threatened, but it was not lost. Their vision of a perfect family had been challenged but they were prepared to reconstruct it piece by piece, guided by love rather than bloodlines. 
Their family portrait might have been marred by this revelation, but they would repaint it with the vibrant hues of acceptance and understanding. As they faced this new chapter, they clung to each other, affirming silently that their love for Sophia and Robert was their unbreakable bond, stronger than any genetic tie. John and Laura, still shell-shocked by the revelation, scoured through the DNA results once again. They compared the genetic markers, reread the concise clinical report, and yet the incontrovertible truth remained. Sophia, their precious little girl, was not their biological child. A torrent of memories flooded back, causing time to fold onto itself, transporting them back to the day of Sophia's birth. They recalled the hospital's sterile smell, the nervous anticipation, the labyrinth of hallways leading to the maternity ward. It was a day seared into their memories, punctuated by a profound sense of joy and fulfillment when they held Sophia for the first time. They remembered Laura's weariness post-labor, John's ecstatic and apprehensive grin as he held Sophia, the distinctive squall of a newborn that had filled their hearts with unbounded love. It was a picture-perfect scene etched in their hearts that now clouded by the unsettling reality. In the quiet, disconcerting stillness of their living room, they tried piecing together fragments of that day, searching for a clue, a sign, anything that could explain the inexplicable. Could there have been a mix-up at the hospital? The question hovered in the air, a specter casting long, menacing shadows over their recollections. They pondered over the maternity ward's bustling efficiency, the nurse's crisp professionalism, the routine checks and balances. Everything had seemed so systematic, so reliable. Could a mistake have been made amidst the orchestrated precision? As they grappled with this possibility, an unsettling cocktail of feelings brewed within them, a baffling mix of dread, confusion, and desperate hope. If there'd been a mix-up, they could fix it, couldn't they? But what would that mean? What would happen to the child they had loved and nurtured for months? The potential implications of a maternity ward mix-up were too overwhelming to comprehend. For all of its scientific certainty, the DNA test had only unveiled more uncertainties. It opened a Pandora's box of questions that disrupted the linear narrative of their lives. The past, present, and future collided in tumultuous vortex, forcing John and Laura to confront a reality they were scarcely prepared for. The walls of their home, which was once reverberating with joy and laughter, now echoed their unvoiced fears and concerns. The family photos adorning the walls seemed to mock their ignorance, the blissful unawareness that had characterized their lives until this moment. Yet they found solace in their shared perplexity, in their unified will to resolve this disconcerting situation. They held on to each other, John's hand firmly clasped in Laura's, their collective strength simmering in the intertwined fingers. They had withered storms before, but this was just another one, a more formidable one maybe, but they were together. In the silence of the night, they looked at Sophia's peaceful face once again. The soft sighs of her sleep were a gentle reminder that whatever the outcome, their first task was to protect the beautiful child they called their own. As they ventured into the labyrinth of confusion and doubt, their guiding light was the undeniable love they felt for Sophia, a love that transcended the constraints of biology. When John and Laura, driven by their heart-wrenching predicament, approached the hospital administration with their predicament, the news sent shockwaves through the staff. The thought of a mix-up was almost inconceivable a direct affront to the hospital's commitment to its patients, the administration struck with a panic and an urgent sense of responsibility, vowed to unearth the truth and launched a comprehensive internal investigation. Days morphed into a nerve-wracking blur for John and Laura as the hospital scoured its records and retraced the steps of that fateful day. The silence was punctuated by a constant barrage of phone calls, every ring bringing with it a shot of adrenaline, a glimmer of hope, and an undercurrent of apprehension. Meanwhile, the hospital plunged into turmoil, with inquiries rippling through the staff hierarchy. Medical records were meticulously studied, hospital personnel were interviewed, and birth records from that day were scrutinized. Every piece of data was re-examined with a newfound scrutiny, every detail inspected under the lens of the shocking revelation. Finally, after an agonizing period of investigation, the hospital identified a young couple, Anna and Benjamin, 
who had also welcomed a daughter on the same day, Sophia, was born. They shared the same surname, a factor which possibly led to the confusion during the newborn's handover. The hospital, horrified by the implications, swiftly facilitated a meeting between the two families. John and Laura were consumed by a swirl of emotions. They felt a flicker of relief, doused with an overwhelming dread. The possibility of finding their biological daughter ignited a spark of hope, yet they thought of potentially losing Sophia was devastating. They found themselves teetering on the edge of a precipice with a dizzying array of outcomes stretching out before them. Meanwhile, Anna and Benjamin were thrust into the chaos. Their world turned upside down by the hospital's harrowing revelation. They, too, were faced with the unimaginable prospect of their daughter not being their biological child, their lives mirroring the tumult that had befallen John and Laura. And so the stage was set for an uncomfortable reunion. The families, connected by an heir and bound by a shared turmoil, prepared to face each other, to untangle the threads of their intertwined destinies. Amidst the chaos, one truth remained inviolable. At the heart of this confusion were two innocent lives whose worlds were about to change forever. The meeting with Anna and Benjamin revealed a painful reality. They were a young couple, barely making ends meet and living in conditions that mirrored their struggles. Their small apartment was filled with love, but the specter of poverty was unmistakable. The baby girl, who they had named Emily, was adored, but they were clearly grappling to provide her with the essentials. On learning that Emily was John and Laura's biological daughter, their faces became masks of shock, disbelief, and sorrow. John and Laura's hearts ached as they witnessed their plight. They, too, were reeling from the revelation, their worlds shattered around them. Yet amidst the turmoil, a decision began to crystallize, formed out of love, loss, and a profound sense of responsibility. They proposed an idea, almost unthinkable, but driven by the imperative of doing right by their children. After many sleepless nights, tear-filled discussions, and desperate soul-searching, the families agreed on a heart-wrenching decision to exchange the babies. Sophia would return to her biological parents, Anna and Benjamin, while Emily would be given the life John and Laura could provide. It was a decision that was as much about love as it was about sacrifice, each couple letting go of the child they had come to adore to give her a life she deserved. The emotional transaction was unimaginably hard. Sophia, oblivious to the magnitude of what was transpiring, was handed over to Anna and Benjamin. Their faces mirrored a mixture of joy and sadness, happiness at the prospect of being reunited with their biological daughter, and despair at the thought of the girl they had loved and cared for slipping from their lives. John and Laura welcomed Emily, their biological daughter, with a combination of relief, joy, and melancholy. They were greeted with the sight of a baby girl who shared their features, a silent affirmation of the DNA test. Yet the joy was tinged with sadness as they bid goodbye to Sophia, the child they had loved and nurtured as their own. This was an exchange born out of circumstance, a painful resolution to a deeply complicated situation. As they parted ways, the two families clung on to the shared pain and the love they had for their children. Their lives, forever marked by the hospital mix-up, would now tread on separate paths, but bound by a shared narrative of love, sacrifice, and resilience.